Welcome back, 918 Disc Golf. We are out here in Stroud on the lake to debut a new course, The Nest. It's a Matt Bell designed par three course. Me and Jacob walked it and it is not your chippy par three course. It's gonna be a test. So since we're planning on probably shooting pretty poor, we're gonna hit you guys with a couple of Q&A questions that you guys posted on our social media platforms. We're gonna answer some of those and we're just gonna walk through the course with you guys. Hopefully throw a few good shots. Let's see how it plays out. It may not have been obvious enough in the intro, but we are going for each other's jugulars today. We're trying to see who can win at this course. Nolan has a tournament coming up here, so he's trying to get some tournament prep in. I'm just trying to see if I can beat him again. There are no T signs out here currently, so what we're gonna do instead, we're gonna estimate distances as close as we can. Nolan does have a range finder for the holes that are visible. Uh, hole one is not. So we're gonna assume it's probably about a 350 foot hole. Tight wooded tunnel, you need to end up left. Uh, up by the, there's, there's like three trees grouped up there that you can kind of see, maybe more. It's to the left of that. So instead what we're going to do, since we don't have exact footage of each hole, we're going to just kind of go over our disc choices. So I want to try to get up there as far as I can. So I'm going to go with the Vanguard, try to throw a flex line towards that tree line on the right. Skip. I don't actually know how close it is, but it's a pretty good shot. First throw out of the car. So we're gonna disc up to a fairway. I think it might be a mid shot, but there is kind of a low ceiling. So we're gonna go fairway and just see how it works. Oh yeah. Well, we're gonna show you all the angles and all the bad shots too, so. Massive distance off the tee. I just wanted to be to the right, but I didn't want to be that far right. Rambling already. Good practice for the next 17 holes though. So. Oh no. Guys, I want you to know I aimed at that tree thinking that I was gonna get in front of it. Um, ironically, I just hit it. Well, the good news guys is Nolan is showing you what not to do on hole one. Almost. First putt of the day out of the car. No warm ups, guys. It's kind of embarrassing to hit band on a basket that like literally doesn't have a band. I'll tap, I'll tap you out real quick, buddy. Tap me in too. Five for me on the first does not feel good, but that just means only ups from here. Um, hole two, they're all par three, so I'm not gonna even continue to say that. It looks like you can throw a forehand just safe to the kind of the bottom of the hill um, or a turnover to get all the way up there. There are some rocks just right in front of the basket. So uh, Jacob's box, let's see what he can do with it. I'm gonna go fuse here and try to play for like a pushing Anheuser kind of turn shot. So I think it's the best way to get up to the basket. Oh, dude, I didn't even see that branch Keep there. Left. I'm gonna disc up to a fairway and just punch it and hope it slides up the hill. Looks a little wide, I lost it behind the trees. I think I'm pin high left. Bro, two oh, for no. two. This is the problem with this course. There's a lot of trees inside circle one on this course, which is interesting. I like it. Tell me what you guys think in the comments, but I enjoy it. It makes you think about where you put your tee shot. Oh, I have nothing, Jacob. This is for Nolan to get a stroke back. I gotta get over this little tree in front of me. Bro, these bands are massive. I'm surprised I even hit metal. All right, hole three. Um, I'm gonna estimate 240 feet downhill. Uh, looks daunting, like the lake is right behind it, but it's not. You probably have about like 70, 80 feet past the basket landing space. Low ceiling with these branches. It's really the only thing in your way. And you don't wanna end up short on the right because there is a tree that'll be in the way of your putt. I'm gonna go instinct on a forehand and really just try to play low to the left and see if I can get it to skip right at the end. And probably like 45 feet deep. I'm also going forehand, but I'm gonna go distortion. Um, just to try to smooth one down there and let it slide. Oh, uh -oh. I am right behind that tree Jacob mentioned. I thought I think it was perfect, I just nicked that tree. I don't have anything. Oh, 
That's a good up. Yeah, only about 50 feet long. Probably wasn't the disc choice, but you live and you learn, right? That's why we're out here. Can we go three for three on the band hits though? That's the real question. Nope. Let's go. All right, uh, two pars on the last one. That's probably the most gimme hole in the course, sadly. Again, this is our first time out here though, so we're still trying to learn distances and stuff. This is where the course gets really challenging. Backhand, flip up, that pushes. The basket's all the way at the bottom of the hill up there. Some rocks behind. Um, I think anything over this hill and down there is probably pretty good. If I had to estimate a distance on it, probably 370. But really it's just, you gotta get far enough down there so you're not having to scramble for your par. I'm gonna go leopard three, try to flip it up flat and have it carry as far as it will before it dies out. Okay. Up, Jacob. I lost that. Oh, that was so good though. It's yeah, it's up there. I'm gonna go F2. It's pretty neutral. I'm gonna try to pop it on some highs and just let it do its thing. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, friendly second kick. My boy has the earlies today. I got a fortunate second kick, so I didn't end up down in the ravine. I got an ante to get up. I just gotta hit this initial gap. Keep it kind of low. Yeah, good shot. So Jacob caught this pile of branches and stuff. This of course will get removed before the first tournament out here. March 23rd is like the opening tournament for this course. So it's playable, but it still has some work to do out here. Another par. Increasing that scramble statistic. One scramble at a time. Good putt. All right, hole five. Another one's gonna be blind off the tee, but it plays, you might be able to see it. It plays down there, uh, next to that tall dead tree in the back. To the left of that, a little in front by about 20 feet. Total distance, guess, would be like 230. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go AVR three and just try to have it go pretty much dead straight down the entire way. That's gonna go left early. Ooh, okay. Don't do that. We're gonna go uh, PA2, basically the same thought process as Jacob. I'm just trying to push one straight. I might want a little more stability come tournament, but again, I've never played this course, so go with my gut. Sneaky line. Oh, not so sneaky. I'm just trying to jump putt one up there and get a par. Nothing crazy. That's yeah. far. Looks like a par. No, yeah, I'm gonna go forehand Annie. I want it to fight out of it, match the hillside. That's gonna fade out early. Ooh, boys, we might be scrimp. No, that's definitely a bogey. We're not even gonna. We're not even gonna act like I can make that. Holy moly! Oh, this is this is atrocious, guys. Don't don't leave your approach shot short. Bogey for Jacob. Hey, bud. Good bar. A little break from the action to uh, take in this amazing view. But really, we want to thank you guys for uh, absolutely blowing up the channel the last month. Uh, we've gained like 126 this month. We just are climbing for 1,000 now. Um, so if you guys could still hit that subscribe button, share our videos, comment, do all the fun YouTube things. Greatly appreciate it. Um, but we want to say thank you to those that have subscribed and have stuck with these videos. So. Back to the action. All right, I got one back on Jacob on the last one, thanks to a dumb mistake on his part, but we'll take it. Hole six, I'm assuming about 270, 300 up the hill. Probably plays more like 300 going up this hill. Um, you probably can't tell, but it's pretty steep. Um, I'm thinking forehand, H1, hopefully pop it flat and just fade off of that big tree up there on the left. Or throw it on hyzer and get all the way through. I actually think that's kind of a jump putt. All right, we're also uh, gonna go forehand. I'm gonna go with this uh, purple Iblin Emperor. It's a little less stable than most of them. So I wanna try to play for the anti-skip up the hill that's straight or just gut it. Oh, that's probably great. All right, guys, Jacob just parked this hole, which was incredible to watch. I have a very obstructed putt, but I have a lane, kinda. I don't like this in front of me though. 
Going back to the straddle. Oh! If I get under that, it's in. Good putt. Once again, guys, tell me what you guys think about this. But we got like trees hanging, trees within like 12 feet of the basket. Do you like that? Do you hate it? Um, I know some people have strong opinions on that, but I really do think it makes you think about where you put your shots. So I, I, I appreciate it, but give me your thoughts in the comments. Perfect. First birdie of the day. Finally got a birdie on the last hole. Hole seven. Uh, gonna play just to the right. If you look down there, there's a little tree marked with some orange paint. It's gonna be to the right inside of that. So it's a pretty tight line. Probably gonna go fireball. But first question of the day, this one's gonna be for Nolan when he has a second to answer. The people would love to know how your putt developed to what it is today. I'll let him answer that when he's back on the, on the box. Didn't mention it, but total distance, I would say it's probably like 230, 240, not super long hole, but you really got to cut inside. So we're gonna go fireball and put it on some hyzer and see if we can get it to skip right. Oh, I actually liked it. It's just probably a little too inside. All right, um, I'm gonna throw MX1 on a little forehand. Doesn't really have the skip edge to it, but I'm just kind of playing the hill and gravity to take it down there. To answer the question, I have a ultimate Frisbee background and I was a handler, which just means I, the disc went through me for pretty much every play. And my putt came from what I used to do in ultimate um, when I would dump the disc back to a teammate is I was just kind of pop it. So very spin heavy playing in Arkansas, a lot of wind. Um, and then moving to Oklahoma to start really my competitive disc golf, I found that just jamming it out the basket with a lot of spin is the best way for me not to have to worry about the wind. So that's kind of how the putt came along. Still in, still in the works like everybody, but uh, it feels a lot better than it used to, so. Love to hear. All right. Yeah. Uh, deep left. I threw that way lower than I wanted, but it kind of worked out. All right, got caught up in this junk, so. All I'm left with is a little jumper slash approach. I'm just gonna do a little patent pending at it. Don't need to do anything crazy. That's eh, just fine. Something else I've adapted with my putt is I, I putt with soft putters. So I kind of dig my thumb into the edge, um, get a good pinch on the disc and then I just snap. Typically it comes out with a little ante when I'm hitting them well. Just like that. Hole eight. This one's kind of, man, you can tell Matt Bell designed this course because Matt Bell is a master at throwing putters and mids on hyzer flip lines. Uh, the man's just goaded at that. But uh, you're basically playing towards the two trees out there and then it falls down the hill to the left. Basket's kind of tucked away, probably about 260, 270 max. Um, I think me and Jake are both gonna throw a mid at it. Just trying to push it through the gap and then let it, let it fade gently. This brush is probably also gonna get cleared up before tournament play. Kind of gets in your head off the tee just because of the elevation change right here in front of you, but. Yeah. Uh, that got through, Pipes. but. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with the hex and just pop it up on hyzer. Hopefully it holds it the whole way. This thing's gotten a little less stable um, over the last few rounds, so we'll see what it does. Uh, that's absolutely perfect. I, uh, yeah, I hope I'm down there for a putt. I got very fortunate somehow I got over that pile of crafting through the trees and I have somewhat of a putt. I'm gonna try a little stepper down the hill. Ooh. Oh. oh. Almost jammed it. Pretty bird. Got a little uphill tester. The thing about this course that I've noticed is a lot of these hill or a lot of these baskets are on hills. This one's definitely on flat ground compared to most, but um, depending on what side of the basket you're putting from, if you miss it could be troublesome. And that's not how you putt, no one. Tough look. We have a, another Q&A question. This one for Jacob. What is your favorite disc golf snack? Coming after the gut, huh? All right. Favorite disc golf snack, if I can manage to, to snag it before a round is, is beef jerky. That stuff is like crack. Um, absolute favorite. Second to that, trail mix. Third to that, water. If I can't get one of those two things, I'm not eating. Let's get into hole nine. 
I would guess this probably plays about 345 feet. Um, we're playing this hole on, uh, we're cranking that difficulty level up to 11. There's a bunch of brush and stuff that clearly going to be removed uh, before tournament day. So we just got to play around it for right now. Um, from the looks of it to me, it opens up to the right up there. So we're going to go with uh, Prodigy H7. Pretty flippy fairway, but still has some stability. And we're just going to try to fillet the line as hard as we can. Get off of it. <sighs> that, uh, that tree filleted my disc. I'm going to go D2 forehand. I don't really like the look of this brush. I, uh, I Like I, Jacob said, I think it opens up once it, it's gone. Um, but right side is definitely more open. Um, and I can kind of squeak it past this brush on the left side. So try to flip one up and just let it finish right. Oh my gosh. Oh! Talk about filleting a line. No one's up there. That I mean, felt so good. This is not your run-of-the-mill mom-and-pop for-profit prison. This is like Alcatraz. There's literally nothing. All right. Found an escape route. Deep underground. Bust out of here. Nothing but 50-foot dive into the water off the prison shore. Oh, and the guards caught me. Okay. That is pretty dang good, Jacob. All right, I got a ways up here. I'm impressed with myself. I would have loved to see this thing full flight, but a um, little jump putt at it. Probably part worse as long as I don't hit this tree right in front of me. Or that one. Oh, no. I didn't, you know, I... Uh, Hearted. We're gonna give this one to Jacob. This is a tap in. So generous. I love it. Long hike up the hill to the whole 10. This has got to be one of the coolest fairways I've ever played in disc golf. Um, I've never been to Utah or Colorado to play disc golf, but I can only imagine this is like a mini version of that. A uh, whole bunch of rocks. You play down to the right, and then you want something to fade hard left. The basket play is kind of tucked in up against the wall down there. Um, probably only about 240, 250 um, downhill the whole way. Just gotta hit this gap and let it fade. Not hard enough. Oh! And his A2 is ruined. Similar idea. Um, I would actually say the hole is closer to like 210, 220. It's not very long. Uh, we're gonna go zone, which no one says is not a zone, it's a zone SS. No, I did the same thing. You got more kicks to the right. Definitely hit early. Little hyzer putter in. I'm gonna to try to run this just cause I, I mean, I have a backstop. So we're just gonna go for it. Oh, gave it the height and distance. Yeah. Too oh, straight. Right. Got a good friendly tree kick back. But I'm not gonna give that to Jacob cause I know how tough that was. Jams it. We got another hard hitting question from the from the comment section, 918 Disc Golf Crew. Who is the luckiest player in Tulsa? I'm gonna have to go with video evidence here. Those two aces that Taylor Noriega hit at Bear against Yasha, suspect. If that man doesn't have the luck factor, um, I don't know who does. Before Nolan gets the answer, we're gonna enter hole 11. Probably, personally, I think this hole is about 370, 380. Uh, really it's, you got to throw something dead straight. The way that the hill slopes down to the right, you're never going to probably see anybody get up towards the basket unless they just absolutely pipe the line. That which rock is, be, is also kind of in the way of a skip. Yeah. So you have the low, low hanging branch. You've got the rock on the left underneath that. You've got the left to right down slope. I'm just playing for three on this one. Yeah, I mean, I'm up, I'm up there, like, in the valley up there. I don't think I could ask for a better shot. That's that was pretty dang. To answer the question, luckiest player in Tulsa. Well, Scott gets off scot-free because he no longer lives in Tulsa, or that would have been my answer. Um, I'm going to throw it out there and say Yasha, and I know he's going to come for my head, 
but I think Josh is the luckiest player just the rounds I've played with him. Pretty lucky. Um, on that note, I'm going to go feedback. Um, I'm going to try to go right at that big tree down there. Again, it's probably going to be hard to see on the camera. But we're going to try to hyzer something in and then just have it sit by that rock. Oh, oh, no. Fortunate, maybe? Uh, we don't know, guys. This is the first time we've played this hole. So, I don't know. So, you definitely want to be on the fairway here. Guys, I have nothing over here. This is jail. This is my fourth shot. I just saw Jacob's up there. He's in circle one. So that's cool. Um, I'm just trying to get off this hole. I mean, I take that bit all day. See if we can hit band again. Wow. No band hit, but. Guys, that is like a sick birdie. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pat myself on the back there. That was incredible. Finally tapping out. Just glad to move on. Um, I'm gonna give you guys, before we get into hole 12 preview, a little feedback from my point of view. Matt Bell designed some incredible courses. Um, Eagle Valley out here is a premier course. A lot of what he does is top notch. So thank you, Matt Bell, first off. The only complaint I have so far with this course the tee pads are a little short for my liking. I know I have long legs, I know I'm 6'5", but I feel like I really have to shorten my run up and I feel like a lot of the back side of the tee pad has quite a big drop, so it makes it awkward. Um, tell me y'all's thoughts on tee pads. I think that's something else that a lot of course building people would love to know and I am interested in that stuff, so if you have thoughts, give me your thoughts. But hole 12, this is the most open hole we'll see out here, um, which after that last one is a blessing, I need it. Um, road and beyond OB, we're assuming. So probably a big forehand or a big turnover down there to the basket. And then you don't want to go too far right, it'll be in the crap. So let's see what Jacob does. All right, like Nolan mentioned, big backhand turnover or forehand. I'm going to go turnover, same wraith I threw on the last hole, and just try to have it hold that line. Really the only danger is just going out of bounds right in front of me and it never crossing back in. And I don't think that's ever coming back in bounds. Okay. Um, we're gonna go back to this D2. Oh, that's so straight and so OB. Gorgeous. Yes. Absolutely gorgeous shots by your boys. Yep. Making the safe shot on the second one. Almost didn't cross back in bounds. That'll work. That was literally perfect. All right, I'm gonna argue that this is why it's important you go play courses before you play tournaments, because this is definitely like, probably closer to like 350. Oh. Little roll away. Of course he cashes a second. Kind of like Jacob said, I really do think this is just a forehand. It looks so much further off the tee, but I don't have a massive forehand, but I have 350, and uh, it's definitely a safe play with OB. My D2 ended up in the tallest stuff over there. Circle one putt. And catches it. Hole 13. This one's gonna play left to right. Um, you play to the bottom of the hill, the bottom of the rocks up there, and you'll have an uphill like 20 footer. It's not a super long hole, maybe like 200 and... 60 maybe. 60 feet, yeah, sounds about right. Um, so just throw a forehand down there or throw a back hit. You can throw a backhand turnover over the top. Uh, just whatever you're feeling like. I'm going to throw an emperor because I'm wild like that. But uh, before that, we do have a question. What was, when did you start playing disc golf and what was the first disc that you picked up? So I started playing disc golf um, all the way back in 2012 was my first round with a buddy of mine named Chris. And uh, we we're just a couple of kids just chucking some Nasty flick forehand. I think the first disc I picked up was a beast. When I started playing competitively in 2017, I picked up my I picked up a Mako 3 T-Bird, which is still in the bag. This bad boy right here. A little got some wear and tear. It's an Avery Jenkins stamp on there. This thing is sick. And uh, if I ever lose it, I'll be very upset. And the last disc that I had, um, besides an AVR for putting, was a destroyer, which had no place in my bag when I first started, but uh, I think everybody can uh, understand how that is. 
Oh yeah, baby. That is gonna be nothing from Nowheresville. I'm gonna get distortion. The one disc I've actually been throwing decent today. Yeah, what's there not to love about that? I mean, it's long. You don't need a putt for what I'm about to do. Ooh, Ooh deep. That's a putt though. Oh, you gotta get it in the air. Good putt. Uh, the last couple were pretty easy and we made them look really hard. So, uh, perks to playing a brand new course and not really knowing, but that's why we're out here. So, uh, hole 14 plays downhill and then back uphill. Baskets tucked off to the right. Pretty much if you can just throw something straight, um, you'll have some kind of look. Going back to the D2 forehand, I worked on that other hole. See if I can just pop one, have it skip up the hill. Oh my goodness. No, That's no. double bogeyville, boys. Like, double, double bogeyville. I don't know if Nolan mentioned, but I believe this hole is going to play right at like 280, 290. Um, I agree. I think it's the forehand hole. Something that you can just flex up there straight. Going with my Wraith, going to try to put it up there just dead flat, low. See if I can get it to skip up the hill. Oh, into the tree. Yeah, no one's in double bogeyville. I might be in triple bogeyville. We'll see. We're going to try to go through the middle here. There's a gap. See if I can hit it. Oh, I did it. He hit it. I oh, we got a good tree kick at the end too. I will take that every time. Guys, I literally have to jump putt to the fairway and then rip one up the hill. Should it's be far, but I think that's okay. Fine. Oh. oh. I can't make it. I just can't make the first one. Monster in hand. Maybe it's the good luck charm. I take back everything I just said about the monster. Respect. Hole 15 uh, would say it's probably like 220 feet, like most of the holes out here. But fun fact, it is a horseshoe. Goes out there and then straight right. And then kind of finishes a little bit more to the right. And then probably a little bit more to the right. We're going to go forehand cut roller because we have unlimited strokes to play with at this point. See what happens. We got a bottom stamp boss. I'm not going to show the bottom stamp because I have my phone number on it. And you hooligans will be hitting me up. Oh, it hopped. It's still going. Oh, right, it's though. still going. Guys, I actually might be insane at disc golf. Although this score is a wash for me as far as this round. I still do have a tournament out here and I still want to play well in that. It's my first tournament of the year. So I'm still trying to gain as much knowledge as possible. So we're gonna try to learn from these last couple holes and then move on. Um, OG H1 on a big old forehand. I'm just gonna throw it to the sky and hope it crushes right. It, There's a tree there. It crashed to the right, but I don't think it was good. Jacob parked another hole. I'm still scrambling for pars and bogeys, so it is what it is. That's just fine. Good shot. All right, score is getting out of hand. Um, one of the more open holes on the course, hole 16. It's the basket up there in the trees. It opens up on the right for a putt from here. It looks like it's jail, but pretty much just wanna play something dead straight. Uh, what, 350 ish? Yeah, 350, 360. Like Nolan mentioned, it's like 360, I'd say 370 possibly. I'm gonna go Yellow Emperor and uh, let's try to blast it out there. Dude, I almost aced that. My, like, my heart is like pounding right now. I literally thought that was going to ace. All right, guys, before Nolan takes a throw on the T-pad, another hard-hitting question. How does T-pad geometry affect your throw? So uh, this is a funny story because um, I was caddying for a buddy at a recent Whitehawk tournament out here in Tulsa. And uh, he plays for, in the MA3, MA2 kind of region. He played MA2. Um, and I was watching some guys tee off on the T-pad and the hole kind of is a big hyzer and they were going from back left to front 
back right to front left, and then they were throwing across their body. Um, and then at the end of the round, I mentioned T-box geometry. And then I got hit up afterwards saying that they tried T-box geometry and they shanked it into the woods and they blaming me. So how it affects me is if I see a gap, I want to run in line with that gap, not away from the gap. So on a shot like this, with the branches on the right, instead of coming from back left to front right and trying to release it, I want to line up with the left side, knowing I'm going to throw a slight flex shot. So I'll go back left to front, back right to front left. Sorry, that's all confusing. But you want to be lined up with your gap, not pulling across your body. So that's how I think about it. Um, but everybody has their own ways of doing things, so. Flip. Oh, oh it's too, too flippy. Much. Guys, uh, comment down below if you think no one needs to take that D2 out of the bag. All right, I overturned this D2, but I'm in the fairway and I have a look at par, which is better than 50% of the holes I've played today, so I'll take it. I didn't account for the headwind earlier, but we're just gonna kind of spike something into the hill. Spike. You know, with how today's gone, I did not think that would happen. Um, I thought I really released that and I was OB. So I'm the luckiest player in Tulsa. Um, confirmed Jacob nearly aced this. It had to go right behind the basket. That was an insane, insane drive. The sad thing is he's getting the same score as me. And I turfed one. How do you feel about that, Jacob? I, I honestly, you know, I'm not even upset. Somebody hit chains today, so. <laughs> All right, hole 17. Uh, plays down towards the tee pad and then cuts into the woods left. Um, so you're never really in danger of hitting anybody that might be playing down on that hole. Uh, maybe like 260 again, downhill blind. Uh, we're gonna go pyro. Oh, that's so wide. I mean, that's fortunate to not go like super deep into the woods. Whew. Heart's still racing after that. I don't, I can't explain what happened. I really can't. <laughs> I'm gonna go archive, straight to stable mid. I'm gonna try to test the ceiling a little more and push as far left as I can. <laughs> Didn't test the ceiling, but that's, that's a little short left, actually. Looks like he's got the zone. Inside. Oh, he hit the last tree. I don't think I could ask for much more than that. One thing to note, I don't know if the plan is to remove the wood there, because you kind of want to hit near that to skip, but... Oh, huge? Uh-oh. Mm, that's just fine. Still almost cans it. Okay, barely stuck it in, but it's in. Scary! Good bogey. Well, finally made it to hole 18. Thanks again for sticking around and watching. If you stay for the whole video, we appreciate it. Hope you guys have enjoyed the content. Um, Jacob smoked me today, um, but it happens. Hole 18 is pretty much dead straight, low ceiling, straight ahead. Um, kind of a tight gap off the T, staggered trees. Um, I'm just gonna try to pump a fairway driver. I think it probably plays just about 300 feet. So. Boys, it's hole 18 and he hit a line. We're gonna go T-Bird, throwing it back so you guys can see the work this thing does. Pretty insane. Look at that, still has stability after like six years of being in the bag. I threw the line I wanted, it was a little low out of my hand. And with this being a relatively new course, you don't get skips off of this stuff, but see if I can make a putt to finish strong. It's been a rough day, but I just want to see a putt go in. Go that in. ain't the putt to go in. Yep. I do want to say this course is really sick. Matt Bell, you did a great job. I am looking forward to playing tournaments out here whenever I do, whenever I get the opportunity. Once the stuff's cleared off, guys, it's going to be really fun. I guess if we're looking at ratings for those of you that care, I would estimate seven to eight under par is going to be right around that thousand rated mark. Because um, if you're finding the fairways, you're really usually going to give yourself some kind of look at a putt. And then it's just a matter of draining those that you can get. So all in all, I had a blast out here. Um, Nolan's comments, the only thing I would take away from the course is the tee pads are a little short. So outside that though, phenomenal course. I give it four and a half out of five. So 
I would agree with everything Jacob said. With this video uh, wrapping up, took the W today. Proud of myself for staying strong, uh, giving Nolan another L, but see you guys in the next one. Peace. Uh -huh.